Do you want to know what they are? Yes. A lot of animations are all around us. When you open your email, when you visit any web page. But unfortunately, no one can tell you exactly what a Lottie animation is. You have to see it for yourself. Take the blue pill, and the video ends. You'll never get to know the true power of Lottie animations with Webflow. Aren't those just empty? Take the red pill, okay. and you stay in Wonderland. And I show you just how deep the rabbit hole goes. Let's go. Have you ever wanted to incorporate a cool animated graphic into your website? Maybe you wanted something flashy and eye-catching for a hero section. Or maybe you just wanted a simple animation for a menu icon. Well, Lottie files are a great way to do this and bring some life to your site. A Lottie is a JSON-based file format that you can use anywhere as easily as a static asset, especially in Webflow. You can just drag it and drop it into whatever project you're working on. They are small files that work on any device and they scale up and down nicely because they're made of vector graphics, so no pixelation there. And they're super flexible. And if you want to create your own, you can even go to something like Adobe After Effects and export it as a JSON file and use it in the exact same way. So where do you get Lottie files? Well, you can head over to lottiefiles.com and they have a bunch of little animations for free. These are great for little touches or menu animations you may be thinking of using. If you have a higher budget or maybe something like a bigger professional corporate website, you can head over to shape.so. This is another great resource that has full animated illustrations that can really look great. These require a paid account to access, but even if you do just make a free account, they actually have a lot of great little icons you can use. So if you wanna download that plan, definitely useful as well. And what's great about Lottie files is that they are recognized by a lot of different devices now, so you can use them on iOS, Android, different browsers, a lot of flexibility there. So today I'll show you how I built out a few of these matrix themed Lottie animations. So let's dive right in. So here's the finished product here. I'm just gonna show you the little menu icon first. So you'll see on smaller devices, my little hamburger menu is actually a Lottie animation. So it's got this three little lines, kind of matrix-like, and when you click open it, it turns into an X, so it signifies that it can be closed. So let's jump into our unfinished product here. So let's go to the nav bar, and this is the nav bar component that just comes in Webflow itself. It has this little menu icon on smaller screens. So I'll just click and get rid of this icon that comes by default, delete that, and make sure we're still in that menu. And we're gonna press Command K to add a new element, and we're just gonna add a Lottie animation. It's an element in Webflow, it recognizes this, and then you just replace the Lottie file. I have this one here, which is that menu and the X, and that's just a Lottie JSON file I downloaded from lottiefiles.com, and just put it there as one of my assets. So in here you'll see there's some settings that are available to you. You can have the built-in duration play, or you can make it slower or faster if you want it to adjust accordingly. You can also have it loop through if you want it to just keep repeating itself and then loop through the animation over and over. We're gonna do that later with our hero section, but not for this one. You can also have a play in reverse if you want. And then down here, there are two different options here. One is SVG and one is a canvas. So SVG might be a little slower sometimes to load, but it's a little more flexible with changing dimensions and expanding beyond its natural size. Canvas, on the other hand, might be more performant, but scaling your animation size might lead to some resolution issues and won't be perfect sometimes. Most of the time you're okay sticking with SVG, which is the default there. Great, so our animation is in place where we want it to be. So next thing, I'm just gonna change the size of it. I'll make it 50 pixels, so it's just a little smaller. And then if I go to the settings of the menu, I can show it in its open state. And then there's the drop down, as we know. So when somebody clicks on this, Webflow already has a program, so it's gonna open, but we wanna change the animation. So if I go to interactions, go here, so mouse click, I want something to happen. I'm gonna start my own new animation here. So I'm gonna hit plus, and I'll just name this 
menu open. So this is happening when someone clicks on the menu, but in here is what you put as your target. So what we're targeting is our Lottie animation. And by clicking plus, I can either affect its size, scale, rotation, all this. But down here, you'll see Lottie is an option. So I'm gonna click Lottie. So you can think of this as like a little movie. So from zero to 100 would be like the frames of the Lottie animation. So as you go from zero to 100, think of each frame adding, and it's almost like a flip book. So it's playing each of those frames. At the beginning of our click, which is this first one here, we're gonna have set the initial state to zero because we don't want it to start playing at all yet. So it'll start from the zero point, And then by the end of this click, I want the Lottie, we're targeting the same thing, to go to 50%. Makes sense, right? Because it's halfway through the animation. And look, now it's an X. You'll see that it looks just like we want because at this point the menu will be open. The user clicked it, so the Lottie goes to 50%. I can also target both of these. I can change the duration if I want it to be a little faster or slower. I can also set some ease in properties. So when I click play, you'll see that it warps into that X right there. Beautiful. I'm gonna save this. And now on the second click, I'm gonna add a new action. So start another animation. And this one is going to be called menu close. So this is basically, we're just gonna do the opposite. So this Lottie animation, the starting will be at 50 because that's where it had ended, right? And then when I click end, it's going to go back down to zero. I'm gonna preview this and show you what happens here. So if I click plus, great, turns into the X. When I click it again, see that's a little slow, it's a little delayed. Depending on your animation, some of the, the frames might be more separate or spaced out. So this one has particularly a lot of space in the beginning of the frame animation. So I actually just adjusted this a little bit. I made it 99 to start, and then I made the last frame 100. So it's basically going from 99 to 100. And for whatever reason, when I preview it now, it's just a little quicker and looks more like a natural reaction there. But play around with your animation. Each Lottie file might be different, but you can always adjust the speed and the frame rates to make sure that it looks the way you want. That's how you incorporate a little Lottie animation to a menu icon. And you can do this for buttons, for different divs. You can really target anything you want and just put a Lottie animation in there. The next Lottie animation we'll look at is the one in the hero section. And that is this kind of reflected, pulsing electronic field here. So this is just one Lottie file and it is on a loop. So it just plays over and over again. So in the middle, all I have is an image here. It's the matrix logo and it's positioned absolute. So it lives in the center. And so that the lie afterwards can live on top of it a little bit. Cause I want it to kind of bleed on top of it to give it that layered effect. So to make that happen in absolute positioning, I just made the hero section positioned relative. In my hero section, compress command K again, add another Lottie, replace this sequence. And I'm gonna use this one here. So you'll see that it is the little matrix bars bleeding in and you'll see how it's over the lettering. It's because by default it has static positioning, so that's fine, that's what we want. And really I don't have to change too much. It already sizes nicely how I want it. The only thing I want to happen when I preview this, you'll see it plays and then it stops. So we obviously want this to keep going. So to move that, remember just go to the settings of our Lottie and I'm gonna click loop. So now it'll play perpetually just on a loop. So the kind of electricity and the power is gonna keep surging through and through. Gives it a nice effect. And that's the Lottie and the Hero. Pretty simple. All I did was add it as an element and it kind of takes care of the rest itself. And the last section I wanna look at is the Lottie pill section down here. So when the user clicks on these buttons, if they choose red, the Lottie animation will play through to the red side. And if they click blue, it'll go back. So this is actually a Lottie file right here. And the animation is just this ball bouncing back and forth. But if we only play it halfway, it'll stop and give the illusion that it's only going to the one side. And then if you finish the animation, it'll go back to blue. So for this button, I'm just gonna add a section down here to keep things organized. Within the section, I'm gonna add my Lottie file. Click that, and it's huge, we don't want that. So I'm gonna replace this with our Lottie Pills, which is this one down here. Still a little big. And I'm not gonna set loop or anything. I'm gonna use the built-in duration and affect it later. But I'll just set a, a width on this one, just so it's a little bit smaller. And on the section, I'm just gonna press Flex to make this centered in the middle there. So now the Lottie animation lives in the middle. And then to make the buttons, I'm gonna add another div in here and I will just make sure this is stacked vertically. So now this lives beneath it, so the children are vertically stacked. And in the div, I will add a button. I will add another button, because we're gonna have a red and a blue button. And I'll just go ahead and style these really quick. Perfect, so I just went ahead, add a little gradient background to this, change the text, and a little hover effect so it brightens the opacity when the user hovers over it. So when I preview this, you'll see this is the pill animation. It just bounces back and forth once and then stops. I could also put it on that loop and it would just keep bouncing back and forth. 
I mean, kind of looked cool, but that's still not the effect we want. We want the Lottie animation to be triggered by these button clicks. So let's go back. I'm going to stop this loop. So when someone clicks on the blue pill, let's add an element trigger. This is going to be a click. So on the click, let's do start an animation, a new animation. This will be called choose blue. So really all we want to happen is have this blue dot be on the left side. So it's already starting there, but say the user had already chose the red version, it's on the right. So all we need to do is set the Lottie's frame position to zero. So I'll target the Lottie, I'll add Lottie here, and now I'll just go down here and I'll change its position to zero. So that way, if it's over there, this will become the new value. It'll just bounce right back to zero because we want it on the left side for the blue. That's all we have to do there. I can just make this ease in if I want. I'll click save. And now for the pill button, the red one, all I have to do is do the same thing, mouse click. On first click, I'm going to add an animation. This one will be called choose red. And again, we'll target the Lottie click Lottie here. So when somebody clicks red, we want the initial state to be on zero, right? Because it's going to be on the blue side. And then by the end of it, after the click, the Lottie will be 50% through the animation. And there you see it bounces to the red side because the animation, think of it as the first frame being on the blue side, halfway through it's bouncing on the red. And then by the hundredth percent, it goes all the way back to blue. So if we just stop it at the 50% mark, it'll give the illusion like it's just being drawn here and then it'll wait. So I'll save this. And now when I preview this, click the red, and you'll see it bounces and stops because it only goes 50%. And then when I click blue, all we had set there was return to zero, which is the first frame of the Lottie animation. So that just means it's on the blue side. And there we go. So each time you click back and forth, you can trigger the Lottie animation from happening. So imagine the power of this if you have things that are based on scroll interactions, you can have while scrolling in view, there's so many different options here. You can do mouse hover, you can have things move in accordance to where your mouse is. And this is a really simple back and forth ball jumping. This is just a pulsing sort of electronic grid, but there are fully intricate flowers and shapes moving and corporate sort of Lottie animations. So there's a lot of flexibility with this, so have fun. So those are just a few ways you can incorporate Lottie files into your project. Use them wisely though. Sometimes if you add too many to a page, things can get a little bit slow or laggy. So just remember that. And also remember that, you know, Webflow is here. It's, it's all around us, even now in this very room. So if you still have any reservations about using Lottie animations, let it all go. The fear, the doubt, the disbelief, free your mind, because I can only show you the door, but you're the one who has to walk through it. Thank you.